So what's going on guys, it's Captain America, hope you guys are well and thank you so much for coming onto this channel. So as always starting off with the match stats, so for this game we did win 5-1, I was playing as a Cam, a central attacking midfielder, and we completely dominated the game, you know, we, we completely controlled the passing, the movement, the counter attacking, our pressing was on point as well, we did have 67% possession, in total we had 12 shots versus 5 from the opposition, and then from my side of things my match rating was 9.6, I had 80% passing accuracy, that should be better honestly, 85% dribbling, I had 2 shots and 100% um, on target, uh, in fact I did have 1 goal and 1 assist, but you know in general as mentioned it was a great game by the boys, do enjoy it, and I'm just going to quickly run through with you like how the game went in terms of the scores and the lineup from our side of things, so we had Sergio as centre back, um, as CDM we had Begovic, as centre mid we had Khalil and then we were trialling out Kurz on the left centre mid position. And then I was playing as Cam as mentioned, and then centre forwards are both TP and Jax. And the way that the game went, you know, the first goal was a good dribbling by Jax, and he, he went into the box and scored. The second goal, again, dribbling from TP, and then he was fouled in the penalty area, and he went on to convert the penalty. And then the third goal, TP was running, he cut in through the box, and then he passed to me, and I uh, I scored, which was a great li little volley, let's say, on my side. Fourth goal was from... Uh, Let's say Jax's finish, you know, good from him um, to get the, uh, the second goal, let's say. And then to complete the hat-trick from Jax, he went on through ball for myself to him and he went on to score the, the hat-trick as mentioned. So again, a good performance from the boys. It was quite, it was quite late night football because we've got so much of these like normal games coming on like, you know, the La Liga, you know, you've got the Premier League, for example, I'm not going to be able to play because we've got a Liverpool versus Manchester United that we're in fact going to be talking about today and giving my analysis on the kickoff at 8 p.m. at Old Trafford. So just do stay on for that. But yeah, guys, do enjoy the match as mentioned. And before we go into the, the full agenda for today, um, just want to say thank you to everyone that subscribed to the channel. You know, I do appreciate the love um, as well as just the, the general feel of um, how we're growing as a channel. So thank you so much, guys. And please do feel free to share this channel or videos with your friends and family or anyone that's a football or FIFA fan you know we're, we're trying to grow as a channel and yeah really get there so thank you again for all your support and yeah before we kick start with United versus Liverpool I just want to talk about the banter club PSG quickly because as we know or as everyone knows they had a game yesterday it was Lille versus PSG and if you may or may not have heard you know the scoreline it was 7-1 win for PSG now Mbappe also scored within like eight seconds of whenever the kickoff was done. It was uh, lobbed through and he, go and he went on to score. And it was, I think, one of the, the quickest goals in the French League um, in the history or something like that, what, what I was reading. But again, it just shows the level of quality that there is within the Farmers League and the Premier League. Because, um, you know, the Farmers League side of things, PSG, they haven't really done well within the European scene. And that's something that's very important <coughs> for them to win. And that's similar to, for, let's say, Man City, for example, too. But these oil-ridden money, uh, let's say, clubs, they're, they're not doing great. And it makes me laugh, man. I'm, I'm so glad, like PSG, for example, yes, they do so well within the, the French League. But then when it comes to the, you know, the European scene, when they're playing against much more competitive clubs, world like, let's say club rankings that they have like the likes of Real Madrid you got Man City in a way now you got Liverpool you got Milan you got all of these like Barca all of these teams that are so strong even on the European scene that PSG just fold because they're so used to playing in the Farmers League and the lack of quality that they are going up against so for them to win 7-1 that should be day in day out man like that should be easy things man they they're guaranteed before even the league starts to win the league if they don't then yes it's a very bad season but they have such a high turnover of like managers. Their current manager is a great asset that they should keep for a long time. He's done fantastic in his previous clubs. I can't remember which clubs now. I think one was Lille, to be honest with you. I think that was his previous club. Same with, uh, I can't remember, now, Marseille or something. But he's done fantastic and he's won, you know, competitions and um, trophies for those clubs that they had not won in a very long time. So, you know, fantastic job on him. So it'll be really interesting to see how he's got the lineup now with Mbappe, Neymar and Messi, you know, with the little um, fights or the, uh, you know, the quarrel that's going on because President Mbappe, as we know, you know, just loves uh, managing stuff, both for transfers as well as the inner affairs of the club. And uh, Mbappe is now fighting with Neymar or Messi. I think it was based on a penalty that it should have gone to Mbappe or something like that. And now there's a little fight going on. So that's going to be interesting to see how that folds because they were always talking about these three strikers being like the uh, 
what is it the the best striker free strikers in the world or something but they haven't seen what the Barca free were as well as the Liverpool free weren't too bad as well so as well as the Real Madrid free but this uh, current one no nah rubbish man <laughs> But no, yeah, let me know your thoughts on PSG, man, and where you think they're going to be positioned within the Champions League. Of course, I feel that they're going to progress through the groups, but they're going to get knocked out, I do feel, around, like, let's say, the quarterfinals, Mark. Uh, maybe by Real Madrid if they get, like, um, you know, grouped in with them. But let's see, man. Let me know your thoughts. But again, we're going to be moving over now to the main topic, which is United versus Liverpool. It's going to be a massive game. I think it's going to be huge in general because both teams haven't started well. Within the Premier League, you know, you've got Liverpool that's only got two points with a draw against Fulham. And then just uh, the latest draw as well against Crystal Palace. So not a great start for them, but they have been scoring goals. Um, unlike their counterpart, Manchester United, who had a very easy ride, let's say. You know, they had Brighton, who honestly have done fantastic last season. And I do see them progressing very well with Graham Potter. Again, he's a, he's a great manager and I've been following him since his time from like the Swedish League. And... For those that aren't aware, you know, he bought this club that was in the third <coughs> division of the Swedish league, all the way to the first division, and then to win the Swedish league as well. And then he done quite well within the Europa League scene too. So, you know, a great manager for the National League for England. I do see him in the far future. But again, they did lose 2-1 at home to Brighton. So, you know, the, the, the goal that was scored was an own goal. And then that, that was the same case within, let's say, the Brentford scene. They were playing at Brentford. Yeah, they did lose 4-0. Four of the goals came at the first half, which were just absolutely phenomenal as well from Brentford because they were pressing that little midget, that little hobbit that is now in the centre-back scene of Manchester United, you know, Martinez. And that's something I do hope that Liverpool exploit as well if he does play. You know, he might, he might be on the bench, man, after those two games against Brighton and Brentford oh because God. they were exploiting him because of, they, they, were, they were taking advantage of his height. The, the corners, the aggression, you know, the, the balls over from the goalkeeper distribution was going to that position of where he was situated. So, again, if he does play for Liver uh, sorry against uh, Liverpool today, I think Liverpool should be exploiting that area. But again, they just need to play their game. And that's something that Liverpool haven't really been doing for the past two games. It has been a, a you know, I was looking at the stats, for example. Yes, they have been playing their same game. But from, if you're com comparing, let's say, January till March and then from April to what it is now they've had uh, a slight reduction in terms of like accuracy on shot on goal they've had a yes similar type of like shots on uh, in total but the shots on target have been very poor for Liverpool even the passing has decreased and just generally like they haven't been the team that they are because of course there's there's a number of factors and you know one of the key factors is there's now a lot of injuries within the Liverpool camp and uh, we did see that, I think, in the last, I think, two, three seasons, I think it was. And um, that's where United did get second. And Liverpool just scraped fourth to get the Champions League. So that season itself, we had so many injuries. And we had the centre-backs, which were Phillips and Williams. And now with, uh, we're feeling, uh, how do you say, like, we're now in a situation where we've got the likes of Thiago off injured for a month. You've got Jones off, Ox off. You know, these are key individuals within that midfielder position. Of course, we do have Cater as well as Milner, but... Milner's quite old and yes yeah, whenever he's on like playing with Hendo and Fabinho it's too defensive we don't have that I don't know we never have that opportunity to score many goals it's just very defensive play when we have three defensive minded individuals yes Hendo does distribute to the forwards as all the wings let's say as much as he can but it's just only as limited as you could get you know you've got Fabinho that's a fantastic anchor defensive midfielder but then you do need Henderson with the likes of I don't know someone creative and I've been saying it for a very long time Carvalho is the is the key, let's say, in resolving or solving that midfield problem for Liverpool because, of course, he could get substituted on and off with Elliot, which who is also a great attacking-minded midfielder, and Carvalho he reminds you of like Coutinho with his dribbling, his passing is absolutely insane as well, you know his vision and focus and everything like that, and that was that was shown when he was at Fulham last season. You know he did score as well as assist many goals as well to get them promoted to the Premier League, so. Let's see what the lineup is for Liverpool because, of course, you know, you've got the centre back situation as well with Matip and Konate off injured. So he did start up with Phillips against Crystal Palace last, uh, let's say, the game. <clears throat> so it's going to be interesting if he does rotate and maybe start Gomez, who I feel honestly is a better option as that, let's say, centre back position because he's got the pace to, you know, counter anything that's coming through with like Sancho. And you've got well, who is a Rashford and uh, Martial. So. You know, we, we do need to keep that clean sheet. I do think that's something that's very important for Klopp because 
we haven't been as defensively great as well. Yes, we do have Trent as well as Robbo, Van Dijk still active, but defensively we, we haven't played well. And that's been shown through like the high line that we do operate as Liverpool. And we were counter-attacked very quickly by Saha. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. And it's always one of those cases within these two matches, um, sorry, these two teams for this match where it's you just never know how it's going to go. Yes, both of them are having a very rocky start. And they're going to be motivated to get out of that position. So I do see both teams scoring. I do see that. You know, last time that both teams played last season, there was an aggregate score of 9-0 for Liverpool. Like United did not score, either at home or away. And of course, I think it was the 5-0 win that we did see at Old Trafford last season, where we had the, the protest, not, not even the protest, we had the walkout. Let's say every United fan walking out, going back to, let's say London, let's say. Um, but now they're saying, you know, they want to do some sort of protest um, where they're going to do another walkout. So, you know, regardless of the score, they're still going to walk out, which in my honest opinion is something which is great. You know, they, they have been saying it for a while for the, the owners or whoever it is, Glazer family. You know, they, they do need to move. And I think that's the transition that United will hopefully resolve and move forward with, with a better owner, let's say, for example, that will invest, that will go by, you know, Ten Hag's philosophy. Because at the moment, the transfers as well that United... Are rumoured for for the players are absolutely awful. Plus, you know they they've just signed Casemiro. Like, don't get me wrong, he's a world class defensive minded midfielder. Okay, a very good player that's won a lot of trophies. But he's come around. I think he's thirty years old to the Premier League, which is very physical to what he's used to. Yes, he's a world class player that's done fantastic in both the international as well as the the club scene. But let's see how he operates within like the Ma Manchester United midfielder uh, position because it's always going to be one of those ones because the acquisitions that United have made haven't really done well with the chemistry of players that there currently is in the starting lineup for United. The players that have been at United have been there for a very long time. So it's a case where they do honestly need to keep purchasing youthful players um, like outside of the league or even during within the league and actually like do well with them because you see Arsenal's transfer policy has been absolutely insane and I do see them going on doing a fantastic job this season because they've gone for the youthful approach they've signed them under like 25 year olds and they they are like literally on form within the, the club side of things and it's just going to continue because that's something that they're driven by with um, you know the philosophy that Arteta has brought in like, United have this dark cloud over them, man. Some sort of juju magic that someone's left before they departed from Manchester United. So, I don't know what's happening with them. You know, there's so much for them that's going on. Pre-season, they were fantastic. They did win the Bangkok, uh, you know, uh, Cup, which is a, you know, a fantastic accomplishment and a feat for, you know, a stature as Manchester United. So, you know, well done to them for winning such a prestigious Cup during pre-season and of course it was always going to be a case where I was mentioning it to a group of friends we got this group on Facebook where we always talk about football and it's called everything football banter or something like that and it's really cool man because we always just take you know you know the the piss out of each other let's say and uh, yeah with with United as such they they haven't been to the form that they should be and, you know, the, the dark cloud that's hanging over them is just going to loom like longer because Man City as a club over the past 10 years has done a more of a, a greater, let's say, achievement and accomplishment within the Manchester scene as well as in the UK scene. Yes, they haven't won the Champions League and, and long may it continue, man. I just don't want them to win the Champions League. Same with PSG, as mentioned earlier. Um, but yes, they've done well domestically and they've won the league more times than United this past, let's say, 10 years. And it's going to continue because United, they need to do something with their philosophy. But I don't know. But do let me know your thoughts on the Manchester United versus Liverpool game. I do predict it being 3-1 to Liverpool. Um, hopefully, let's see how that goes with my prediction. But do let me know your prediction down below. And if you are new to the channel, we do talk about this random malarkey throughout and you know real life let's say predictions as well as my analysis as well on the games so do stay in and check it out on my other videos and please do subscribe to stay yeah, notified of any new videos we do upload every single day so yeah take care and goodbye nice <laughs> oh fuck